Welcome back. This is part three of our online tutorial series. And in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the mapping window and how you can create something called a pixel matrix. So to begin with, what I want to first look at is the two different types of effects that we have within designer. We have group effects and we have pixel matrix effects. They work in different ways. So it's really important for you guys to notice the difference between the two and also how they work and how they generate content. So to begin with, I'm going to be looking at group effects. Now, group effects are very low on overheads, so they're, they're very processor friendly, but also they can be used for both static effects, so just a static color like a red or a blue, but also basic types of movement as well. Obviously, we've created four different groups within the last tutorial, and these are the groups that we're going to be using uh, with group effects. So if I open up the stairs, group you'll notice that the fixtures all appear within a specific order now this order is really really important especially when you're applying some kind of movement to that effect because this is how the effect is going to be generated so for instance let's say i'm working with a teardrop or a raindrop type of effect the order that the fixtures appear within this group folder is how the effect is going to be generated so if i want my you know fixtures to be doing a raindrop type of effect that runs from top to bottom. The order that the fixtures appear on the left hand side is how that effect is going to create its content. So this is quite a common thing that we see. A lot of people sometimes when they're getting used to design or just starting out, they'll go to create a group, group effect. It won't look exactly how they expect it to. And by and large, it's because the order of the fixtures within this group is not in the order that they uh, should have it in. Now, if you want to correct that, it's very, very simple. You can just select all of your fixtures within a group, right click, reorder by, and then you have two options essentially, number or by position. So you can then reorder all those fixtures and hopefully that will then get them into an order whereby your effect will be created correctly. Of course, you can obviously just move them by selecting them and moving them up and down the list. So that's group effects. Now I wanna move on to pixel matrix effects and how pixel matrices work. So a pixel matrix effect is very simple. Again, it essentially tells designer to create or generate the effect by the position that the fixture lies in. You can kind of liken this to a TV. So obviously with a TV, you have your millions of different pixels all in different areas. They get programming depending on the area that they're in. And obviously when you put all those pixels together, you of course then have an image of some kind. This is pretty much the same example, same kind of concept for how we create pixel matrices in designer and how we generate effects. We will assign a pixel matrix to a certain set of fixtures and then designer will work out their area. And then when we go to map effects or media content to that later, it will obviously then generate with that in mind. So creating a pixel matrix is really simple. Just simply select your set of fixtures, right click, and then there is an option under new group to create a new pixel matrix. Go ahead and click that. You can give it a name such as tower matrix. And then I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm going to create a pixel matrix down here with the chandelier fixtures. So right click on the fixture, new pixel matrix, chandelier matrix. Okay, so by and large, that's us done for creating pixel matrices in the layer area. What I want to do now is I want to move to the mapping area. So underneath the layout area, you'll see that there is an icon that says mapping. Go ahead and click that. And this will lead you to the mapping area. So at the top here, we have our two different pixel matrices which we can preview. So if we look at the tower matrix first, and we just zoom in a little bit, you can see that we have all of our fixtures on screen which can be selected. But by and large, I don't really want to adjust this because design has done a pretty good job of creating this pixel matrix. Now, if I go over to the chandelier matrix, you'll notice that the position of fixtures isn't quite as we want it to be. Now, design has done its best here, but it's essentially putting circles and square holes, so it's not going to be perfect. But it's very simple to adjust. You can just click on the fixture. And of course, you can just move that into the position that you want it to be in. This is really useful if you're working with projects that have quite complex shapes in them, say, you know, a set of LEDs running up a building. And if you need to get them into the exact area just so they're perfectly mapped, you can do so just by moving them around. Once I've done that, I can have a couple more options just to quickly finish this off. And I, one of them is adjusting the width and the height of the pixel matrix. So of course I can do that just by making that 
bigger or smaller. Alternatively, just hit crop size to contents, and that's going to obviously then just crop that outer perimeter of the pixel matrix to your set of fixtures. So one of the things that people use a lot with pixel matrices is media content. So a common example would be if you had a uh, set of LEDs on the side of a building and let's say you wanted to map like some advertisements or maybe a company logo to them, you can do that by importing media into designer then later on in your programming mapping it to the pixel matrix that you've just created. So the ideal situation here is we'd have something a little bit like this in front of us, a tower matrix where you've got a set of fixtures in, in what we'd call an LED array whereby we can just map media content to it. So it's a little bit like a video ball. So if you want to bring media into designer over here in the right hand corner we have the media tab we can click on import if you go to the training folder where we've been referencing all of our training resources from, there'll be a folder called media samples. Go ahead, click on that. Select all of the media in that folder and then finally click open. That'll then bring that in designer and we can then use that later on in our programming. So if you want to, you can have a preview of the media content by double clicking on it. Then you also get all of its necessary file information just underneath that. Now, I should be clear, the media content that I've brought in probably isn't the best example of this, but there are some rules that you do need to follow when you're importing media and using media on pixel matrices. So the first thing you need to look at is the size of your content in terms of how many pixels it has. So a pixel matrix here has 16 by 32. Ideally, I'd want to create media content at that same size. You want to map your media content pixel for pixel, pixel for LED, okay? There's no point bringing in 4K media when you're working with a pixel matrix that's 320 by 200. All that's going to happen is designers are then just going to scale that content right, right down. And of course, um, that's going to not only take up processing power in your computer for that to then happen, but also it's not going to be as accurate. So generally speaking, rule of thumb, if you're working with a pixel matrix that is a certain size, let's say, as I said, 320 by 240, uh, you're going to want to create media content that is that exact size. One or two other things that you should be aware of. DMX has a refresh rate of around 33 frames a second. So generally speaking, you're going to want to create media content that has the same or a little bit more frames per second. So anywhere between 33 and 35 frames a second. Obviously, if you're using a higher resolution of DMX, say 44 frames a second, which is the highest that our controllers can go to, again, you just need to make sure that you're creating media content that's in and around that frame rate. And that's going to give you really nice transitions and it's going to give your media content the best look on your project. So finally, just one thing that I'm going to look at is just the different file types that we support within Designer. Uh, if you haven't done so already, make sure you have a look at our help because there's loads of really good information in there. If you want to load the help within Designer at any time, there is a question mark up here which you can click on. That's going to then load up your help in a web browser. And if I just go to reference, then if I go to mapping, and finally, if I go to media presets, all of our file formats that we support for pixel matrices are in the help right in front of you. And of course, there are, again, just some tips and guidelines for you to follow. So make sure you have a read through this. And of course, uh, just uh, make sure that you abide to these as best as you can. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. Uh, thank you very much and join us in the next one.